Hey guys, today I'm going to lead you through a sequence that's going to help you get into Garudasana Eagle Pose. We'll go ahead and get started in our Lightning Bolt Pose Vajrasana right here. And just sit up tall, setting the tail down towards the floor, lift upward through the chest, through the crown of the head. Even draw that belly in a little bit so we are lengthening through the center of the body a little bit more. We'll start by stretching out the shoulders a little bit. So go ahead and bring the hands out in front of you. We're just gonna connect the elbows, connect the forearms, palms, and fingers. Just squeeze really nicely. So we're drawing the shoulder blades behind us apart to help bring the hands in a little bit closer. From here, just go ahead and take a twist over towards the right, nothing too big. Just seeing how it feels. And then over towards the left, still drawing shoulder blades apart, squeezing forms together. Back to center, we're gonna inhale, lengthen up, take a back bend here, point those fingertips towards the wall behind you, elbows turn towards the sky, and then go ahead and fold, elbows coming in. You can run on the back even more, chin can come into the chest, point those fingertips forward, and then bring yourself back up to center, release the arms, maybe you need to give the hands a little shake here before we bring the hands onto the mat. We're going to stretch out the wrists, so we'll start to rotate the palms outwards, and if you can get the, the fingers to rotate all the way towards the body, you can just spread the fingers and uh, press the wrist creases forward into space, maybe leaning back into the hips a little bit more, and for some of us this isn't going to be accessible, so maybe rotating fingers towards the sides of the room is going to work a little bit better. And uh, again, we'll spread the fingers as much as we can, pressing through every finger pad, knuckle pad, inside of the palm outside, and then we'll just lean side to side. So as you come to one side, we're leaning more weight into that side, stretching out the wrist. Other side there, just to take on a little bit of weight, help support the stretch we're taking. You can do some circles, half circles here. And maybe you warm up the wrist a little bit more so you can bring the fingers facing behind. Not too important here. You can move around wherever you are. And then release. You can sit back for a second, maybe shaking out the wrists again. And then we'll just stretch out the tops of the wrists. And it's going to be a little more intensive than the bottoms. Top of the hand into the floor. Maybe you get both. Or you're just doing one at a time. And you can experiment with making a knuckle here or a making a fist, drawing all the hands the fingers in, and then maybe lengthening all the fingernails onto the floor. Do this both at the time, same time, or maybe just one at a time. And you can make some movements here as well, just maybe some side to side movements, some circles, keeping a bend of the elbows. We're not hyperextending, allowing those elbows to relax a little bit. And we'll gently release hands back on the floor again if you need to sit back. Let those hands take a break, do that. And then we'll thread the needle here. This is going to get a little bit more into the shoulder blades, allowing them to broaden and lengthen away from the spine. So in your tabletop, maybe you tuck the toes behind a little more grounding for me anyway. We're going to lengthen the left hand up towards the sky on the inhale. And on the exhale, reach through. See how far you can reach towards the right side of the room first, squeezing the chest muscles in, the biceps in towards one another to help lengthen the back of the heart. Then left shoulder comes onto the floor side of the head. And we're just using this right hand, bring it underneath your shoulder to press the right shoulder back into space. So as we draw the left shoulder blade away from the spine, the right shoulder blade is going to come in towards the spine. Draw the belly in. Send the hips straight back into space. They may be coming out towards the, the right side of the room. I'm going to send them straight back, kind of like taking a child's pose. And lengthen through the crown of the head, not just allowing the head to rest, but making it strong. On your next inhale, right hand is going to come back underneath the chest. If you want to stretch up, lengthen out before taking the other side, you can do that. Otherwise, we're back in our tabletop. Okay, left hand grounds, right arm, use it to reach and stretch out. On the exhale, we're reaching through, so before you put that shoulder on the floor, see how much you can round the upper back, then right shoulder to the floor, side of the head, left hand underneath the shoulder to press left shoulder back into space. So make the right arm nice and strong, 
Whole back of that arm pressing downward, fingernails pressing downward, rooting strongly to help you twist. Send the belly in, send the hips straight back. Maybe even turn the gaze up towards the sky a little bit, give the neck a, just a little more of a stretch. On the inhale, we're coming back upright. If you want that stretch up again, you can take it. If not, both hands coming onto the floor. From here, bring the shoulders, uh, hands shoulder distance apart. Tuck the toes behind you. We're lowering to, lowering to the floor in a chest knees toes pose. Start by tilting the tail huh? like you're taking a cow. Bring the shoulders forward in front of the wrists and start to bend the elbows. Squeeze them in towards the sides of the body. Lengthen the shoulders back and down the spine. Lower, lower. Maybe you just hover here or you can bring the chest all the way onto the floor. Push the shoulders even farther back. Open up the front body and then you can bring the legs all the way down onto the floor. We're going to take a locust variation here. So before we get started, go ahead and lift the thighs and bring the inner thighs a little bit closer towards one another. Then separate the feet hip distance apart. Press through the tops of the feet. The kneecaps will rise. And usually we take our uh, belly down back bends with the hands kind of closer towards the chest. See if you can stack them underneath the elbows for locust variation too. Send the shoulders back. Elbows stay squeezed in. Lift the heart here. Not so much that you're using the arms and picking the belly off the floor. We're still grounding through the space in between the belly button and the hip bones. If you were to lift the hands, you should be able to keep yourself upright here. Maybe you lift the legs as well. Lengthen forward through the crown of the head, out through the toes, and then lift with that extension. Keep the thighs internally rotated so they're not spreading out, but hugging close by. Make sure you can breathe. Inhale, slowly lower down towards the floor. Hands can come to the chest here, tuck the toes, press yourself into a child's pose. You can bring the arms out in front a little bit more to help press the hips back into space. And just soften the belly in between the thighs, breathing deeply into those thighs. Okay, press yourself upright, come onto your backs. Gonna do a little hip opening on the floor uh, before we try to do it upright. It's gonna be a little bit easier. So, on your back, bring the feet in hip distance apart. Start by bringing the right knee and hug it tightly, half wing reliever. Flex the toes. We'll be pressing up through the big toe mounds, but drawing the pinkies closer towards the body. Keep those feet nice and active. So from here, take a half happy baby. So you're gonna bring the inside of the foot facing up towards the sky here. Maybe you grab onto the shin and pull the knee in. Maybe you find the inside of the foot or the outside. But see if you can rotate the knee outside. The toes are gonna to rotate out as well, kind of towards the back uh, right corner of the room here. So if you feel the thigh over the abdomen, we're pulling it out. Then see if you can pull the knee down and towards the side. We're trying to aim it towards the armpit and hug the inside of the thigh in towards the inside of the body. If the left leg can straighten out and it's grounded and both hips are even, go ahead and take that last stage. Maybe you come all the way onto the back as well, but you can be with heart up and you can be with left foot on the floor if you need to as well. Deep inhale. And we'll just start to straighten out the leg now. So if you can't find the foot here, the big toe for Supta Padagustasana, recline big toe pose, you can find back of the thigh, back of the calf. Flex the toes the same way, toes drawing towards you, heel reaching up, pull the thigh a little bit closer. We're not pulling the left hip off the floor, so if the butt's lifted, ground through both sides. Again, if you can lengthen the left leg onto the floor and ground through that, go ahead and do that. Maybe you flex the front of the right thigh to help open up some space behind the knee. And you can keep a little bend here, not as deeply as happy baby, but the leg doesn't have to be completely straight. From here, start to release. Left foot is gonna come down onto the floor again. And we're gonna find a supine um, uh, cow face or uh, eagle abs here, you can call it as well. The legs are gonna be in cow face, but 
Go ahead and bring the right knee on top of the left. So you can have the right foot just out towards the side and we're hugging the insides of the thighs. If you can make the double wrap here, maybe right foot comes behind the left calf. Don't worry about it if that's not happening. You can just have legs like this. So like we had the forearms connected, you can do this for your eagle abs or since the right knee is on top, we're bringing left arm above the right. We're crossing. You can hug the shoulder blades a little bit to get the biceps closer, but then see if you can bring the backs of the arms towards one another. And maybe you do your double bind and the hands find each other. It's a little wrist flexibility. We worked on that a little bit. Maybe you can find the double bind. So from here, we'll inhale, extend the toes forward and the hands back, and then exhale, crunch up, bring the upper body off the floor, connect the elbows and the knees. Two more times, inhale, lengthen, Belly is in, core is wrapping in as well. Exhale, squeeze, pressing down into the lower back to lift. Inhale, lengthen one more time. Exhale, squeeze, you can unravel from here, come onto the back. And if you need to, windshield wiper the knees side to side or lengthen the legs onto the floor before we come to the other side. Go ahead and do that. This is Bosk over here. I told him to uh, stay on the couch and not bother me during my yoga video, but as you can see, he's not very obedient. Okay, so other side. Feet are going to start on the floor and just bring the left knee in, hugging it deep in towards the abdomen. Draw the belly in. Flex both sets of toes here. And then we'll go for that half happy baby again. So foot, press it up towards the sky, grab onto the calf or the thigh or the inside of the foot or the outside. Just pull that knee in towards the outside. So again, if you notice the thigh over the abdomen, we're pulling it away. Face the toes over the knee as well. That alignment's going to help. And just pull that knee in a little bit closer. If it's too far towards the outside of the mat, just hug the inside of the thigh towards the outside of the belly. And you can stay right here or maybe right leg is extending down onto the floor. From here, find your supta padangustasana. So if you're used to finding the big toe, you can find the big toe. Otherwise, hamstring, calf, finding the foot with both hands, pull that leg in. Maybe right leg extends down onto the floor. Ground down deeply through there. Just stretch out the back of the left thigh. You can bring a micro bend into it. You can flex the front of the left thigh to deepen the stretch. Listen to the body. If it tells you you're going too far, ease out of the pose. Deep breath in. Exhale, gently release that leg. We're finding our eagle abs on the other side with our Gauridasana shape, our eagle shape here. So right foot on the floor. Bring the left leg to the outside of the right leg. You can even bring the hands to opposite knees and pull those knees in two opposing directions. So maybe they stay kind of like this without the double bind. If you can get the left foot behind the right calf, great. Arms come overhead. Since left knee is on top, right arm behind the, or over top of the left, cross. Maybe just grab onto shoulder blades. You can just continue to hug here. Maybe backs of the arms touch, maybe insides of the touch. And then we'll just inhale, lengthen, exhale, draw the belly and connect knees to elbows. Two more times, inhale, stretch out, keep the squeezing in, exhale, draw in. So we're squeezing the inner thighs, we're squeezing the biceps, the forearms towards one another to deepen this pose. One more, exhale, draw in, and then gently release. Whatever you did the last time you counter pose, do the same thing, stretching out the legs, Maybe windshield wiping. And from here, we'll draw both knees in. Just rock yourself up and down a couple times until you can gain enough momentum to find your seat. We're either crossing the legs or bringing the legs out towards the sides. Bring yourself into your tabletop. We're going to find a downward dog from here, uh, taking it in a couple stages. So if you know downward dog, you probably do. Don't just zip up into it, but uh, stay with me for a moment. Start by bringing the knees a little farther back behind the hips. We'll tuck the toes. 
Bring the hands out in front, spread the fingers, and act as if you're going to press yourself into a child's pose. And do press yourself into a child's pose here, just sinking the hips on top of the heels. Straighten out the arms. See if you can lift the knees and just hover low here, so not lifting the hips yet, keeping the knees bent, bellies in, try to compress the belly into the thighs. Keeping the belly into the thighs, maybe you raise the hips a little bit more. And if this feels good, you can start to straighten out the legs. And if you start to feel a little too much pulling, maybe keep the knees bent, staying on the toes, and you can walk out the heels as well. Just trying to get you guys used to uh, bringing the belly close towards the thighs in your downward dog. So sometimes we'll be uh, pretty straight in the upper body, but once we straighten out the legs, the heart is com coming forward in the space. We want to keep the heart pressing back. So from bent here, bend the knees, look forward. You can step, walk, hop, find your way to the front of the mat. We'll widen the feet hip distance apart. Inhale up into your flat spine, kind of like your cow shape, the tail tilting behind. Knees are nice and soft. Reach the arms behind. Palms can face up or just faint thumbs down. Doesn't really matter too much. Just bring the shoulders away from the ears. Bring the hips even farther back. Kind of taking an utkatasana almost here. And then you can press through the feet. Bring yourself up. Reach the arms up for upward hands pose. Act as if you had a ball you were holding on to here. So a lot of energy in between the arms. And then we're reaching up without bringing the shoulders high, keeping the shoulders down. Lengthen up through the fingertips. Make sure those fingers are spread and strong. Inhale. And then exhale. You can bring the arms to the sides. If you need to roll the shoulders or anything, do that. Otherwise, just uh, find your way to the front of the mat with feet a little bit closer together this time. So from here, find Utkatas in a fierce pose again. Start to sink the hips back. Squeeze the inner thighs, bring some more weight into the heels. Lower back is tucked here, so not a lengthening, not a back bend, keeping a neutral spine. Swing the arms back on the exhale, kind of like we did coming up just now. And on the inhale, try to stay as low in the hips as you reach the arms up. And my knees are going to come a little farther forward and more weight into the toes. Just try to minimize that a little bit. Exhale, flow back, bringing shoulders away from ears. Sink a little bit lower. Inhale, lengthen up. Exhale, sink back, maybe kind of paralleling upper body towards the floor. Inhale, up one more time. This time, exhale the hands to the floor, Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, half forward fold, extend the spine. And this uh, will set the left foot to the back of the mat here, finding runner's lunge. So I want you to bring your right knee above the ankle and the left toes underneath the heel. So if you notice your heel is pretty close towards the floor, Step the left foot back a little bit more so the heel is lifted. And if you notice the heart is sinking downward, chin is into chest and hips are lifted here, maybe bring some blocks up or come onto fingertips because I want the heart to be lifted forward and for you to be able to turn your gaze forward as well and for the tip hips to tuck under a little bit more. If you can straighten out this left leg a lot, do that. But if it helps you to bring a bend in the, into the knee, you can do that as well. Finding our crescent lunge from here, you can draw the arms back, bringing the belly in, start to parallel or perpendicular the shoulders towards the floor, so stacking them above the hips, then turn the palms, reach up, find your high lunge. And if you notice you're still leaned a little farther forward here, that's a little clue to tuck a bend the knee, tuck the tail a little bit more. Strong arms like we had in upward hands pose, so not just allowing them to relax, they're reaching up, hugging biceps a little bit closer towards the ears. Inhale, exhale, swing the arms back again. We're finding our way to the front of the mat, so more weight is coming onto the right foot. Maybe you need to bring the left toes in a little bit closer, but we're kind of staying in this Utkatasana shape. Right knee's gonna bend, left knee lands with it in our Utkatasana still. Inhale, reach the arms up high. And exhale, back to that fierce pose. We'll flow through this a couple times before high lunge on the other side. Inhale, extend the arms up a little more back bend here in your chair pose. Exhale, lengthening back. Belly's in away from the thighs. Inhale, lengthen the arms up, keeping shoulders down. Maybe even lift the toes. Exhale, back. Inhale up one more time here. Maybe look up a little bit. Exhale, the hands to the floor. 
forward fold. Inhale, flat back, find your seven shape. And you may also need blocks to set back here, but we are bringing right foot to the back of the mat. Hands come to either side of the left foot. Knee comes over the ankle, right heel comes over the toes. Press down really strongly through those feet. We're squeezing the thighs inward towards one another, lifting the belly and the heart. Start to bring the arms back, keeping shoulders away from the ears, lengthen up. Shoulders stacked above the hips. You can turn the palms upward from here. Reach up, maybe look up as well. Even if it is hard for the balance, look up and make sure that arms are nice and strong here. If you notice you're twisted out towards the right a little bit, see if you can send the right side body forward, the left side back. Inhale. Exhale, bring the arms back again. We're transferring weight onto the left foot, so maybe right toes come a little bit closer. Keep the knees bent here. See how long you can make this transition last before right foot meets the left. Inhale, lengthen all the way up. Urdhva Hastasana, upward hands. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, come into your flat spine. And we'll just take a vinyasa from here. So you can hop back into chaturanga. Otherwise, we're stepping back into plank. Take an inhale here. Exhale, shoulders in front of the wrist. Lowering down, maybe on knees, keeping the elbows squeezed in. See if you can bring the heart to the floor before the hips. Inhale into your cobra. Belly's going to lift, so it's not like locust quite. But belly comes in up and forward, heart comes up and back a little bit, keep those elbows in, roll over the toes, find your downward dog, and take a moment to tune into the body here, if the breath has lost its uh, smoothness, try to bring that back, and just try to uh, gather yourself a little bit before we go through another little sequence. Okay, so bring the feet a little bit close together here. We're going to inhale, reach the right leg up towards the sky. Exhale, bring the knee in towards the chest. We're still in downward dog here. Hips are lifting, shoulders are back, knee is just in towards the chest. Keep the knee glued where it is. Now we'll stack the shoulders above the wrist in a plank shape. This is your cheetah pose here. Hover here. And when you're ready, right foot comes in between the hands. Maybe you need to come onto right fingertips to get it there. And if it doesn't quite reach, right hand, bring the right foot to the front of the mat. Inhale up into your high lunge from here. Exhale, reach the arms back into space. We're coming forward again, lifting the left knee up this time, seeing if you can grab onto it. And if you can't quite make that transition, we're just coming back to the fierce pose here with knees soft, landing, then you can stand yourself back upright and coming to Garudasana from there. Otherwise, we're holding onto this left knee in our flow. Wherever you are with both feet on the floor or just one, start to bend the right knee. If the left foot is on the floor, lift it, cross legs. Sit nice and low here. So if the right leg is straight, the left leg is not going to have room to wrap around it. Bend like you're doing an Utkatasana, upper body forward, arms may be reaching back here in order to get the hips low enough so you can bind. And you can have left leg out towards the side, it can hug in, maybe you find the double bind. Arms reach them out in front, left leg is over, so right over left. Reach out. So again, stages here, maybe you're grabbing onto shoulders, maybe backs of hands touch, maybe insides. Tuck the tail. Bring the elbows forward, spread the shoulder blades, squeeze the forearms as you lengthen fingertips up. Squeeze the legs a little bit more. Deep breath in. Exhale, release, feel that freedom in the arms. So maybe you bring both feet on the floor, shake out the right leg really quick. Otherwise, left leg is coming back, finding our high lunge again, left toes find the floor, inhaling the arms up, exhale, the hands to either side of that front foot, and we're just walking over for a prasari to pat it to nice and a wide-legged forward fold. So you can widen the feet pretty wide here to outer wrist distance, inhale, flatten out the spine, and exhale, fold forward. See if you can chaturanga the arms here. So if 
The arms are not long enough for your, not flexible enough to bring the hands to the mat and bend the elbows any, maybe bring blocks up here. But see if you can send the elbows just straight back into space as you squeeze the shoulder blades back onto the spine. This is going to give you more length through the torso as you lower the crown of the head towards the floor. And you may notice the hips are a little behind the heels, try to shift them forward a little bit more so that they're at the center of the feet. Keep the belly engaged. Inhale into your flat back. Exhale, we're walking back towards the front of the mat here. So we'll come onto the left toes, step the right foot to meet the left plank pose here. You can uh, do your vinyasa or maybe take a rest. So exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog or cobra. So up dog, hips off the floor, cobra, hips on the floor. Back to downward dog. And if you need a rest at any point, take the child's pose instead. You can always skip your vinyasas. Okay, we'll do that on the other side. Bring the feet a little bit closer together. Inhale, reach the left leg up towards the sky, one legged like downward dog. Exhale, bring the knee in towards the chest. The heart is still pressing towards the back of the room, so we're not bringing shoulders forward. It's not coming into a plank yet. Now go ahead, bring the shoulders forward as you come onto the tippiest of those back toes, puffing up the upper back, spread the shoulder blades, left foot, bring it in between the hands. Slide it forward if it doesn't get there. We're on the right toes still. Inhale up into your high lunge. And exhale, lean upper body forward as you reach arms back. We're stepping to the front of the mat or trying to hold on to the knee so you can be right foot on the floor or we're coming all the way up. Wherever you are, start to bend the left knee. Right leg comes up, if not already, wrap it around the left leg. So you can stay pulling knees in two opposing directions, maybe even have a block for underneath this right foot to help you balance. If not, maybe you double wrap here. Keep super low, that's gonna help. Arms out in front, left over right this time. Bind, backs of arms or palms touch one another. And then just squeeze inward everywhere you can. Sending hips back a little bit more, but straightening out the back. Bring the forearms towards the wall in front of you. Steady gaze over those wrists. Inhale, maybe you're wobbling a little like I am. And exhale, come out. So maybe right foot finds the floor and you take a little rest or we're stepping back as slowly as we can, bringing the right foot onto the floor. Inhale, back into your crescent lunge. And exhale, those hands onto the floor. Walk yourself over to the wide edge of the mat. We're taking another Prasarita Padottanasana wide-legged fold. If you wanted to try an arm variation, maybe you're bringing hands behind the back. You can pull onto wrists and just draw shoulder blades back, bend elbows towards the wall behind you, or maybe you can join forearms grabbing onto elbows or Baddha has to bound hands, bringing the palms in towards one another. Reach those knuckles towards the wall in front of you. Use the core and the legs to sink downwards. Press into the outsides of the legs, draw upward and inward through the insides of the thighs. Shift the hips a little forward. Keep the shoulder blades squeezed in and away from the ears. Gently release, hit the hands to the floor. Inhale, flatten out. Exhale, we're walking back to the front of the mat. Step the left foot to meet the right. Lower down. Chaturanga. Nice, slow lean, steadily, not just zipping to the floor on your push-up. Again, taking your time and your back bend here too. Keep the elbows a little soft, even if you can straighten them out all the way. Think heart forward, grounding down through the thighs, through the hips. Come back, downward dog. Last downward dog. If you needed anything, uh, any other shape in your downward dog, feel free to take that now. Okay, bring the knees onto the floor. So we did a lot of uh, squeezing and use those uh, 
adductors here. We're going to try to open them up now. Also open up the core a little bit more from that squeezing. So we'll do some uh, external rotation of the thighs and some back bending work. So start by coming all the way onto the belly. We're going to do a half frog pose. So bring the elbows underneath the shoulders. Hands can come onto the mat if it's a little bit better for the wrists. Can bring the hands to join one another. And again, we're drawing inner thighs a little bit closer. Press to the tops of the feet, kneecaps rise. You're going to bring the left heel in, flexing the toes. Right arm comes to center, reach back. Find the outside of the foot or the inside. Wherever you are, bring the heel in towards the glute. See if you can bend the elbow. If it's on the outside, elbow's coming up a little bit more. The hands on the inside, elbow can face the uh, the right side of the room if you are doing your left leg here. If you know the grip flip, you can take it. Otherwise, see if you can bring the shoulder forward into space, lift the heart up a little bit more. So we're softening the left shoulder forward to stretch through the posterior deltoid. And then just ground that left thigh as deeply as you can. Try to bring most of the stretch that's coming into this pose into the front of the left thigh and the hip flexor and the quadricep. And gently release. If you need a rest, arms can come alongside the body, resting one temple or the other. If you need to shake out the hips, shake out the hips. We'll just do the other side. So back into your sphinx shape here. Set up the legs, pressing those pelvic bones down deeply. Keep the belly in and engaged throughout the pose. Left arm comes to the center a little bit more. We'll bring the right heel in. Start to reach back, find the same clasp as you did on the other side. Pull the heel in, flexing the toes, round the right shoulder forward and lift the heart a little bit more. If the right knee is coming out towards the side, you can check it out, try to pull it in. Pressing through the front of the right thigh to stretch out the hip flexor and the quadricep. Inhale. Exhale, gently release both feet on the floor. Again, if you need to, soften on the chest and rock out the hips. If you rested one cheek, rest the other one as well. So we're stretching on both sides of the neck. We'll just bring the hands to the floor, tuck the toes, press yourself upright. Find your dandasana here, your staff pose. And sit up nice and tall. Can bring the hands to either side of the hips here to help lift the heart. We're bringing shoulders back and down as if you were pressing into the wall behind you and trying to straighten out there. From here, we'll take Johnny Sears and head to knee pose. The left foot is going to come in, bring it to the inside of the thigh. And if it doesn't quite make it like mine, it can be a little more towards the knee. And if the knee's super high up, just try to ground through the outside of the foot strongly, pulling the big toe back into space, pinky back into space as well. Otherwise, ground through the right leg, try to ground through the outside of the left thigh. We're going to rotate towards the straight leg here. Inhale, reach the arms up right, and exhale, fold forward. If you find the foot, great. If not, you can always bring the knee up and compress the abdomen into the thigh, or you have that strap and you can find the heel of the foot here. And just try to bring a back bend into your fold here, so the hips and the back in the space lengthen the heart forward. Kind of like we were um, chaturanging the elbows during our wide-legged forward fold and in our uh, belly down back bends. See if you can sink the elbows low and draw them back. So if you find the foot, but you don't have any room for the arms to bend, they're nice and straight, or not nice and straight in this case, but straight, maybe bring a strap in so you can bring that bending in action, draw the shoulder blades down the back, and this is gonna help draw the heart forward a little bit more. Instead of the back rounding, we want it to stay a little longer. And I know the chin wants to come in towards the chest, but see if you can just lengthen it forward. And release, bring yourself up right. Left leg is gonna come out, shoot it out to meet the right. We're gonna take a back bend before we do the other side. We're gonna be in staff pose, so really ground the legs, flex the toes, anchor down through the seat. We're bringing the hands behind the back. So they may start out a little bit wider, but we're gonna to try to bring them shoulder distance apart. So pull the hands in a little bit closer. 
If fingers don't want to face forward, they can face outward a little bit more. That's okay as well. We're just drawing shoulders back and down. Lift the heart. Draw the belly in. Anchor down through the legs to help lift the rib cage. We're sending the back ribs towards the front ribs, the lower ribs up towards the sky. Maybe even look back and open up the throat as well. Keep those shoulder blades engaged, number one here. So if you look back and the shoulders open, maybe start to look forward a little bit more so that the shoulders can stay engaged. Deep breath in. Exhale, gently bring yourself back to center. And we'll take that head to knee pose on the other side. So right foot's coming up this time, bring it to the inside of the left thigh. Sit up tall, we're strengthening both feet here. Ground the outside of the right thigh as you twist towards the left. And I like to even face a little bit more to the outside of the left leg, just so uh, my heart and belly are completely uh, squared the way they need to be. Inhale, stretch up, lift the rib cage, reach out through the fingertips. Exhale, keep that length. Dive over that straight leg. Find the foot or the strap or the floor, bring the knee up into board you. Can inhale, flat spine. Exhale, sink a little bit deeper. And really find your breath here. So we're not using uh, much strength. We're not using any balance. So you have a little more space to just work deep into the breath. You can even close your eyes. See if there's anywhere you're holding that you can release or any of the body that you can just engage a little bit deeper to help contribute to the stretch. Deep breath in. And exhale, we're coming up right. So maybe use the right hand to bring the right knee back up, shoot the right leg to meet the left. We're gonna find that same back bending shape here, just this time on our forearms. So you're gonna sit up tall again. Hands for me are a little bit uh, closer towards the hips, so not three inches behind the back for that last back bend we did. Maybe I didn't give you the amount of space, but uh, hopefully uh, you figured that out. But hands are gonna be a little bit closer. Still shoulder distance apart. Squeeze the shoulder blades in, lift the heart. This time, come on to those forearms. So the elbows are going to want to splay, hug them in. Root down through the forearms, especially the elbows, the legs, the tail to lift the heart. Maybe you look back and we're just squeezing the shoulder blades behind to push the heart upward force. Can keep on looking back. And I need to bring my elbows a little bit farther back. They should be kind of stacked underneath uh, the shoulders here. You can look back and if they're a little farther forward, maybe you walk those elbows back. Just make sure the belly's in and engage. And we'll just roll onto the back from here all the way. So, we just have a twist and a supine bound uh, angle pose here left in practice. If you wanted to pause the video and do anything else you were needing to do before we cool down, maybe an inversion, a deeper back bend and upward bow, something like that, maybe go for it. Otherwise, with me, we'll twist here. And we did a lot of bent leg shapes, so I'm gonna go through a straight leg twist here. As you straighten the right leg out onto the floor, bring the left knee up towards you. Like we were gonna take that uh, big toe hold, find the back of the thigh, the calf, maybe the foot, and we're bringing that straight leg all the way over to the right side. So you can lift the hip and maybe the leg doesn't find the floor and you're on the back, kinda like this. You're reaching the left hand out towards the side, turning the gaze over the left hand as you reach the left leg farther out towards the right side of the room. And I like to come onto the outside of the right hip here, and I'll bring my foot all the way into the floor, grabbing onto the outside of the foot with my right hand. And maybe that's not working for you. You can bring a strap in, and if the straight leg does not feel good, bring a little bend into it, or a lot of a bend into it. Just draw the belly in, and wrap the abdomen towards the left side of the room. And just slow down the breath. You can bring that on back up. Both feet find the floor. This time we're extending the left leg as we draw a right hand. 
And just find a straighter leg if that's comfortable, back of thigh, the calf, maybe the left hand finds the outside of the right foot. And we're just lifting the right hip coming out towards the side. You don't have to make it all the way to the floor. If you do, great. Come a little bit more into the outside of the left hip on the thigh if that's comfortable for you. So instead of being on the left butt cheek, my butt is right off the floor and I'm on the side of the hip here. I'll bring the right hand towards the right, turn my gaze towards the right as well. Draw the shoulder blades down into the mat, maybe rooting deeper behind the heart. Can you get the twist a little bit more into the upper body rather than uh, more in the core and the hips? Start to bend the right leg, bringing yourself back up to center. Last thing we're going to do, just bring the insides of the feet towards one another. Press the outsides of the feet in towards one another to lengthen the knees out towards the sides. And if this is uncomfortable with the thighs, you can prop it up using some blocks. If it's uh, not enough, maybe you have the hands on the thighs. Just gently drawing uh, the thighs in two opposing directions. And we'll soften here. Close the eyes. Just get your body a little more accustomed to its final resting pose, the Shavasana that you're about to take. And whenever you're ready, I'm going to stop the video up pretty soon, but you can straighten out the legs and take the Shavasana that you would like. I won't lead you through it today. If you needed a Shavasana in detail, I have some other videos where I go in a little bit deeper, or you can find another meditation practice that you would like to close your practice. Otherwise, we're ending right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you uh, like what I'm uh, teaching you, please like and subscribe, comment on my videos, give me any feedback, always looking for that. Namaste.